If you want to take better photos of your coral on your phone, then you should stick around. Hey, what's up? My name is Remy and I am a reef hobbyist and I love making videos. So you combine the two and here we are, the Bahama Lama Coral Channel. Remember, if you like this video, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you're always notified when I upload new videos. Now, I've been shooting photos and videos for as long as I can remember. I remember going back to high school and everybody in the class would be assigned some sort of writing some paper or something and I would always be like hey can I do a video instead and even if the video was mediocre I still got an A. It was a good way for me to be creative and I could always express myself through video and photos. So when I got my first reef tank you can imagine how frustrated I was when taking photos wasn't as easy as it usually is when you're just out in daylight or taking photos with studio lights. And at the time, I couldn't really find any good tutorial videos on how to shoot the coral that was in my tank. So it was pretty frustrating. So as I usually do, I just started taking pictures. And as you can imagine, they weren't very good to begin with. So these photos actually predate my Bahama Llama Coral Instagram page. And as we move into the Instagram, you can see that the photos don't really get much better to start. And taking photos with the limitations that we have in the reefing hobby, having to take photos in water and with blue light, they can really pose some issues when it comes to taking photos. Now, hopefully after you watch this video, you can skip all of the beginner stuff that I had to go through and you can skip right to the good stuff. I'm only gonna focus on taking pictures with your phone today. We can do a whole DSLR episode coming up, but for now, because everybody's got a phone and it's the easiest to access, I'm just gonna focus on taking better photos of coral with your phone. Now, just about every single photo on the Bahama Lama Coral Instagram page was taken with a phone. All right, so the main pieces of hardware that you're gonna need are a phone, of course, in this case, the iPhone 10, a gel filter of some sort, or you can always use a pair of orange construction glasses. Or if you're into the photo and video hobby, you might have some of this laying around. Personally, I would recommend one of these clip-on filters because they're so easy to just clip on and off your phone. Now, if you've ever wondered why we use orange filters in the hobby, if you look at a color wheel, the exact opposite of blue is orange and yellow. So you kind of play with that orangish yellow hue a little bit and then you get some great photos because it minimizes the amount of blue that's coming into the camera lens. Now, coral photography is some of the most ridiculed in the land. You shouldn't need an orange filter. It doesn't look very realistic. Or photoshopped. And the reality is, who cares what the haters say about your photos? They're your photos, so if you like them, that's all that matters. And honestly, there is a time and a place for blue and white light when it comes to corals. Any piece of your coral that fluoresces is gonna be best captured under a blue heavy light. On the other hand, if you have some leather corals or some non-fluorescing corals like this pink nephthia that looks beautiful in white light, but once you turn on the blue lights, it's like, where did it go? Just know your coral and know what light your coral does best in. All right, let's go grab some shots and I'll show you how I do it. All right, so I have the flow turned off in the tank and we're gonna go ahead and take some uh, pictures of this Walt Disney Acropora. Tenuous. So as you can see here, looking good. Sometimes you gotta pull just a little bit off the glass. And what's nice is the iPhone has this telephoto, at least the iPhone 10 has a telephoto. So let's go ahead and take a picture here. Perfect. And now let's get one from above too. Looking good. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and take this into a quick edit. All right, so let's take this into Photoshop Express and we'll pick, uh, we'll do a side shot first. So normally when I come in here, I just, I, I see what we're looking at as far as colors and what we can exploit and what we can play with a little bit here. So this is mainly what I what I play with right here. So the exposure to me looks a little bit high. So we'll lower that, increase the contrast a little bit, um, maybe increase the highlights just a little bit, lower the shadows. 
So we go here. Uh, the whites to me look okay, maybe a little brighter. We can lower the blacks down a little bit. I go to vibrance. Just a little bit up saturation we can kind of leave it right there we don't need to oversaturate this one it's already pretty good clarity up dehaze a little bit that makes it a little bit sharper then you go to sharpen i don't like to do it too much i mean you can go you can go like all the way here and it looks ridiculous um you can see how grainy that gets so i just i usually shove it up about five or six and that to me looks perfect so here we are, uh, and that's pretty much all I do. And then what I'll do for Instagram is I will take it and I'll go ahead and crop it to a square. So we'll get the, you know, the best angle here. Maybe get the clownfish in there a little bit. And there we go. Go ahead and save that to the camera roll. And there's our side shot. So that's a good photo for Instagram. You can just go ahead and and uh, use that on your Instagram channel. Now let's go ahead and go to the top down shot real quick. Uh, let's go ahead and see what this one looks like. Perfect, oh my gosh, it's so stunning. I, I love this shot, this is a great one. I'll probably use this one instead of the other one. Let's go ahead and up the contrast just a little bit. Go ahead and up the highlights just a little bit. Make the shadows come down just a little bit. Um, blacks. You want those to usually, we want those to go down. It's a little bit darker. You know, we don't really have to play with the temperature or the tint. Uh, I usually like to add a little bit of vibrance, uh, clarity, just to up a little bit, um, dehaze it. That's always nice for the aquarium pictures. Um, and then, you know, sharpen it just a tinge. And that's pretty much it. It's already. The coral's doing you a lot of favors with the fluorescence and the orange filter is really helping a lot too. So go ahead and make this a square. <laughs> get, get the little hint of gold torch in there and go ahead and save that. There are a lot of photo editing programs out there that will allow you to adjust contrast, exposure, the black and white balance, as well as shadows, vibrance, saturation, on and on and on and on. So a lot of these programs can do that for you. In iPhone specifically, there is an editing function where you can do some of these basic edits on your own. Now, I like to use Photoshop Express because I'm an Adobe Creative Cloud subscriber, so I get Premiere and Photoshop and all of those programs. So this Express program actually comes to me at no cost, or it's included in my subscription. The goal is to have an end product that pops but looks natural still. And again, it's your taste, so you can edit these photos however you want. I think most people tend to get more upset when vendors post overly saturated photos because you wanna know what you're getting when you purchase those corals online, not having seen them in real life. A lot of vendors, if you request a white light pick, we'll give that to you. So if you really need to see it in the white light, go ahead and just request that. And hopefully, if they're a good vendor, they'll go shoot a photo under white light for you so you can see both blue and white. Now, once you get the hang of this, you can do some pretty cool stuff. Here's a cool trick. So make sure that the room is totally pitch black. So all your lights are turned off in the tank and grab up one of these Polyp Lab blue torch uh, flashlights. Actually, any flashlight with a blue filter on it should work. See, I'm gonna go into my lights and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn off all of my lights. Fish are gonna be like, what is going on? All right, so that one's off, that one's off, and that one is off. So we have no lights in the tank on right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to turn off all of the rest of the lights in the room. And we'll go ahead and turn off the sump light too. All right, so for the most part, it's pretty dark right now. I'm gonna take this blue torch and just kind of spotlight one coral. Look at that. Very cool, huh? The camera's having a little bit of time focusing, but if you get it finessed just right, you can get that nice fall off in the back. All right, so let's take the spotlight shot and go ahead and edit that. So here it is. Wow. It's so cool because 
We've got all the lights off in the room, all the lights off in the tank, and we've isolated this one coral and it looks so cool. Now, if you play around with this a little bit more, it can look a lot better than, than what we did here. But for the video, man, this just, it, it looks great. You can up the contrast on this and, and, and already you can start to see, if you, if you take the shadows down, it turns black in the background, it just falls off. Maybe give it a little bit more of the whites. And then if we come over to the black option and we and we decrease those blacks, we don't want to lose the coral. See how we lose it right there? We don't want to lose it. So right as it starts to fade there, go ahead and give this some vibrance. Pass on the saturation, go up in clarity. Dehaze it a little bit. Now I will admit that this is not one of my better shots. You can see it's soft like the shot is soft right here but for the, the video you can when you play around with it you can get it pretty sharp and you saw the pictures that we took in the light before so uh, and you can help it out a little bit by sharpening it but honestly once it's soft and it's out of focus it's not really going to do much but for instagram this is a kind of a cool shot the lonely walt disney frag go ahead and crop it to uh, Instagram and I know you don't have to do this and but you know there's just a lot of dead space up here so go ahead and square it up save that to your camera roll and you should be good to go if you've got any tips or tricks that you use when you photograph coral go ahead and leave those down in the comment section below and also if you want to give your Instagram channel a little plug go ahead and put that down in the comments too I feel like I should do all future video shoots with these glasses on. If you like this video and it was helpful for you, go ahead and like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and we'll see you in the next one. I'm Coral Man. I am a man of coral. I see no blue. All I see is orange. If a blues artist wore orange glasses, would the blues still exist?